across a really interesting passage in Bernie Siegel's book, Love, Medicine, and Miracles. And I thought I would share it here today because I think sometimes in the healing process or sometimes if you're going through the conventional medical system, it can seem like any information or anything that's not hard data and hard facts can be BS when it comes to healing. But I found that that's often not the case and that often the patient and the individual person that's trying to heal has some of the most important data of all. I want to share what that is in this video. Hey guys, it's Dr. Alex Hine here, Chinese medicine doctor and licensed acupuncturist, author of the health book, Master the Day. So I've included down below this video is a free link that's four daily rituals that can help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. When you sign up below the video, you'll also get info on if you'd like to become a patient of mine locally or online via telemedicine. So here's the passage that Bernie Siegel said. Now the context for this passage was that he was describing what separates the unusual survivors from the average patient. And here's what he said. He said that physicians must realize that patients they consider difficult or uncooperative are those who are most likely to get well. Psychologist Leonard Derogatis, in a study of 35 women with metastatic breast cancer, found that the long-term survivors had poor relationships with their physicians, judged by their physicians. They asked a lot of questions, and they expressed their emotions freely. So to recap, these women that were most likely to survive really advanced breast cancer were the ones that were the most difficult, but judged by their doctors. They were the most difficult because they didn't just sit back and accept what their doctor said as fact or as the word of God. They didn't just sit back passively. They didn't accept it as a death sentence. They didn't let that become the only thing that dictated their fate. And I think what you often see in these kinds of people is the ability to strongly trust their gut sense, to strongly trust their gut instincts about, does this feel right? And does this sound right? And if not, where else do I have to go? Whether that is a second opinion, a third opinion, a complete alternative, or not even doing conventional care. Now, I'm not saying that's what anybody should do, but it's interesting that what Bernie Siegel calls the remarkable patients or these unusual survivors, they're difficult in the sense that they do not just sit back and resign themselves to fate, that this is how it's always going to be. Now, I found that both in my own healing journey, as well as seeing patients of my own, that something that's very interesting is that it's a question that doesn't seem to come up, but is so important, is asking the actual person who wants to heal, what do you think needs to happen? Like, what do you think you need for this condition to improve or get better? Even my quest to resolve lifelong digestive problems. You know, I went through the whole conventional medical system from general practitioner to dietitian, nutritionist, GI specialist that was then recommending colonoscopies, all these really invasive, serious procedures. But internally, my gut was saying, look, what I have right now is really not that serious. I don't need a colonoscopy. That's probably not the thing that's going to give me the useful data. And so I declined it and I never got one. And that was the last time I ever saw a physician for my problem. And I'm not saying that should be you or what you do. What I am saying is it's surprising how often the gut instinct of the person is accurate. Now, that may be something that says, you know what? Maybe for right now in my life, even though I'm not supposed to have coffee because it worsens my acid reflux or I'm recovering from burnout, maybe right now that cup of coffee makes my first three hours of the day really enjoyable. Maybe being a little bit more flexible with this crazy year that's going on, allowing myself to eat sugar a little bit or allowing myself to eat out more because it makes me feel good. Maybe right now it is the solution. And in a year from now, it won't be. Maybe the thing that's going to make you the happiest right now is to get a dog or get into a long-term relationship or scale back on your career even though you have those aggressive financial goals and instead you spend your evenings in a new hobby or you start gardening. It's interesting how often we can have these gut instincts like those, those heart yearnings and we don't trust them. We don't think that they're real. We don't think that they're accurate. How could that ever be as accurate as a double-blind placebo-controlled study? And I find that clinically it's shocking how accurate they really are. So if you're watching this, this is really just a call to action to in addition to whatever you're doing to feel well and to heal, maybe also start trusting those gut instincts a little more and just play with them at first. Just see where they go. 
Don't expect them to replace all the care you're doing, but just see where they lead you in your kind of healing journey as well as in your life. So that is my little rant and two cents for the day. Again, if you'd like to stay in touch, you can download the free guide right below this video, which is four daily rituals that can add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. It'll also give you info through my newsletter on how to become a patient of mine locally or online via telemedicine. All right, before you go, I have two related videos on this exact topic 